Hello and welcome back. Today we are here continuing our Great Ching Run. Last episode we're starting to pop off a little bit, um, mainly off the back of a few things, uh, but a big thing that we are doing that is perhaps not a normal play pattern is we are really leaning into having a ton of universities. We have 104 right now, we're getting up to 135, um, and the big idea here is we are building them to economies of scale, and then we are utilizing the fact that um, this cap, this cap, I uh, this is my least favorite tooltip of all time, it says this results in an innovation cap this cap is a soft cap we have 445 way over the cap but what you get is you get uh extra tech spread uh overflows into spread and so currently we are actually spreading text faster than we are actively researching them. So this is going to be uh, quite useful for us. Um, last episode, we made great use of the reverse sway mechanic. In fact, we're even thinking of doing one a little bit right here. For example, ask for transfer state and we can transfer uh, Confederate Texas and this sort of thing. However, uh, I think we actually want the USA to beat up on Texas and we don't want to get a truce with the USA because we want to beat up on Texas, but we're going to let the USA go after the CSA first. The main idea being the CSA being a major power is not eligible to be our subject. If they were a minor power, they would be eligible to be our subject and we could let the USA beat the, C up, the CSA up this time and then next time look to try and reverse sway the CSA to be our subject. So we're actually going to not get involved involved here uh unless there's we'll check again and see if there's anything like really tasty but uh we're not going to get involved for texas and oklahoma those little snippets of texas and oklahoma here that's really not worth it um and so we're not interested and nor are we going to attack the usa right now even though we don't have a truce the reason being that um well, we want them to actually beat up the CSA. We do have this, which we were reverse swayed in for transfer to door. This is our subject, of course, everyone remembers the Shing East Indies, very not suspicious at all. And so this is how we're continuing. We're hoping to get onto wealth voting, maybe be able to demarginalize the trade unionists, although that's probably uh, not gonna happen this episode. Uh, and maybe we're gonna be on the lookout for getting not a royalist, but a theocrat, because I actually kind of like the idea of going theocracy. We haven't really done that too much. I don't even know what the theocratic tag for Great Ching is. And so maybe that'd be a little bit of fun if that uh, opportunity presents itself moving forward. So we are gonna go after the Suez Canal here diplomatically. Um, I think with our excess of Han Pops, uh, us getting the migration exodus in order to actually get the it employed up it should be okay uh, and so we're gonna do this it's gonna cost us 30k for five years not too big a deal we'll also look to incorporate it also uh, the CSA managed to get uh, Russia on their side but Russia's not helping out very much we'll see how this plays out exactly um, and then we'll maybe look to declare war on either uh, of these guys or both of these guys one at a time so we have reorganized during this episode uh, some of our authority, um, getting rid of some of our edicts. We're still bolstering the industrialists. We still want to lean into them. We failed on wealth voting, unfortunately. And so maybe we even don't even want to do that. And we are organizing all of our efforts into just extracting as much as much uh, resources and money from the economy as possible and then re-injecting it in the form of construction. Because as long as we have a ton of peasants and as long as we t have like unemployment, um, you know, we just absolutely want to full send uh, every like aspect of the economy at adding construction. And so this is kind of the main overall heuristic. Um, well, almost every part of the economy, we still definitely do want to be kind of coming in pretty heavily on these universities. Uh, I think the other batch is getting pretty close to where they're coming up in the queue, uh, where we have another 31 coming in. Uh, but this is uh, generally how things go. When you run out of labor, that's when uh, it becomes start becoming good to start rolling back some of the taxes, rolling out some of the consumption taxes instead, you know, throwing stuff in a different direction. Currently, what we are doing is we're doing road maintenance in GNZ because we're actually building that up taller than the other provinces. And other than that, it's just full money. So um, we will continue in this way and maybe try and get to like 2,500 construction despite the huge deficit we're running currently. So we just finished the Steam Donkeys technology, which was what was required for using our unique company coming in here, the Kaiping Mining Company. Now, you see we're not currently hitting the productivity, and so we've made a few adjustments in order to try and hit the productivity on this. Namely, we have made sure that we don't have cheap transportation anywheres, uh, because if transportation is expensive, that's going to mean that uh, the railways are going to be more productive, and it's productivity that we need in order to generate this bonus. We also 
also came in coal mines um, and we are also trying to make these more productive and so what we did is we turned on uh, steam donkey on all the coal mines the reason being is that when you the way productivity is calculated is it is going to be these goods minus these goods not including wages wages are not included divided by the level of employment times 52 and since the level of employment is a denominator anytime you use labor saving pms you are going to dramatically increase you are going to dramatically increase um productivity even if it's not profitable so like swapping over this is not profitable however it will increase the productivity of this building uh but we maybe don't want to do it because well we don't want to lean super well actually we will do this one here uh we will also do it in uh gngz but we are not going to turn it on in a lot of places uh because it won't really be profitable in a lot of places another thing we can do is we can try and uh again it's this number minus this number divided by this number times 52 another thing we are going to do in order to try and facilitate this is we are going to come into the trade uh thing and we are going to try and export coal as much as possible in order to increase productivity minus 19 is a kind of a little bit of a depressed coal price and there are a bunch of people who are willing to accept coal and so this will help to get us into productivity bill which we notably really want to do in order to gain this 10 percent uh, technology spread uh, almost all of our innovation is going into spread a huge chunk of it at least maybe almost all is not fair 560 uh, of that 470 is going into tech spread uh, and we're currently have a tech spread percentage of 90 percent if i recall correctly correctly let's come in here Ooh, that's not the one wait we're in the wrong menu okay we have a tech spread here of 90 percent because we're getting minus 10 percent from censorship so this plus 10 percent is going to return us to 100 percent so what it actually represents to us is an 11 percent increase um and but this is going to you know dramatically it's going to increase the amount we're getting from tech spread by a decent chunk tech spread is notably again uh cannot emphasize this enough we are getting text faster through tech spread than we are through active research our active research is only yielding us 92 our tech spread is yielding us 140 which is big nice this is why we build the unis as a chain so russia didn't help out uh the usa or sorry the csa at all csa gets enforced on and uh, they are now minor powers so we will keep an eye on this region expecting to see the usa continue to use return states on them and uh expecting the csa to maybe be willing to uh you know become our subject much in the way say the same way mexico did uh you know when they need our help also this border gore is disgusting um but we currently have almost no infamy and i think we're going to go for a really big play uh kind of maybe the biggest play we're going to go for in terms of infamy this entire run and that is going to be subjugating persia it's unfortunate we don't have our you know original og guy he actually died pretty young uh because he had uh the very nice uh what is it careful which gives minus 20 percent infamy generation which is nice for these huge big chunks of infamy uh if you were like parliamentary republic and you have one of your ig leaders who has this uh trait you could kind of shuffle them around just to declare these huge wars uh but we are going to come after persia there's a ton of resources here following patch 1.5 update um and also there's going to be excess arable land and so in the very long run we are going to look to migrate our pops out there much in the same way we are kind of doing that with this uh peru bolivian land would not be shocked to see if some of these uh or so let's pull up the culture menu wouldn't be shocked to see if some of these turning uh han relatively soon if we take a look at the population well actually maybe not that much han yeah you know they really nerfed migration with uh i think it's the new mechanic of job satisfaction is really really making it so that Pops don't migrate a lot like they used to. One of the reasons why we didn't want to play in the new world um, too, too much. But anyways, that's the way it is. All right, we will make these guys a protectorate. I think we were getting decent migration over here in Transvaal. Uh, six point, hmm, let's see how many Han Pops. I mean, we got 100k Han Pops. Not quite what we would want, but anyways, in any case, we're going after Persia here. They're going to have a lot of resources regardless, in addition to, like, the excess arable land, a lot of coal and iron, and this is something that, relative to what Great Qing, uh, other stuff Great Qing has going on, this is something that uh, Great Qing is lacking in, and so hopefully we manage to pick up a bit of resources here. So unless we were, there was some way for us to swap laissez-faire, like, instantaneously, which there's not... Uh, I don't think we can maintain this current level of, uh, you know, 
construction. And so what we are going to look to do is we are going to slowly wind down uh, several of these uh, in areas that uh, we think we're running out of labor. So we see here this place is uh, recruiting up. Just any place that is recruiting up, we are going to wind down a few of these. And then uh, we are going to wind down, like, uh, then we are going to wind down a little bit more... Um, we're going to do it slowly. We're going to look to minus 5 to 10 at a time. Uh, and then, you know, assess, reassess, and try and get this deficit maybe to negative 3, 400k. Um, it might be sustainable, but uh, we are approaching uh, not sustainable very, very quickly. And so we are going to try and get out of there. Uh, usually we don't overshoot like this, but uh, I just got excited trying to hit 2k. And I, it's not going to happen quite yet. So we're kind of threading the needle a little bit right now. We're just barely under pace. Uh, and so our credit is increasing a little bit faster than our line is increasing. So we need to delete down a little bit more. I think we need to get around 250K and then maybe we'll be able to sustain that. Um, but uh, this is how you notably want to avoid turning off construction and you instead want to you know delete construction sectors because when you turn off construction you're still having to pay the wages we're not trying to we're trying not to delete too many from one spot at one time because well actually they don't care that they get fired because we have the the buddhists uh bonus so maybe we just don't care too much uh but notably uh they don't care that they get fired because the standard of living decreases doesn't matter it's not real um but uh we will look to keep kind of pulling down a little bit yeah we're gonna need to pull down a little bit more this is unfortunate we can tolerate a little bit of pauses but generally rather than pause you want to delete construction sectors again because that way you won't be paying uh for what is a majority of the cost of one of these buildings or what is a huge chunk of the cost of one of these buildings which is wages uh but when you delete a little bit you also drive down the price of all of these goods uh which is going to make the rest of your remaining construction uh sectors a little bit cheaper to operate so we dipped into bankruptcy for like one to two weeks but i think we've stabilized here uh, at minus 136k uh, with about 2 million of buffer and I think we're going to be able to build out of it from here notably not going to add any construction and we wound down a couple hundred construction in order to get to this point um, it would be really nice if we had the petite bourgeoisie we're paying quite a bit in interest at this point if we had the petite bourgeoisie powerful or uh, you know mm, not marginalized um, that way we would get their lo minus loan interest rate uh, as a kind of thing and we might even like want to kind of lean into minus loan interest rate if we could doesn't look like we can acquire it too too easily uh which is a bit unfortunate this would actually instantly bankrupt us which is kind of amusing because uh, it increases the cash reserves uh and so you would just run a huge deficit for a second uh while the cash reserves need to uh increase up so uh but yeah central banking is not like available for this minus loan interest rate otherwise we would maybe want to go for it uh but we've already researched it. Uh, anyways, I think that this is kind of we're out of the we're out of the woods here, and uh, we are going to be you know protectorating Persia here, uh, which is going to be big nice for us. And on the back of this, we can also look to increase our level of you know uh, what is it? Uh, well, we can decrease autonomy in some people, uh, but maybe we should hold off and look to get our infamy down. Uh, but Persia is going to be a very very nice pickup coming in here. So a little bit of an update. We are now have 3 million of credit line. So we are uh, increasing the buffer uh, amount. We are just looking to, you know, kind of stay at this level of construction, at least for now, um, until we get a much larger buffer, this sort of thing. Um, we could, in theory, increase construction, but the moments or the weeks in which we are in default are not worth it, and so we're going to look to get out from underneath this a little bit, especially if we go, like, full mobilization, then we'll have some problems and hiccups. Uh, we're currently, you know, annexing Lanfang, which is not a big deal, uh, and we will be mainly chilling with the diplomatic place, because we're super infamous, uh, but, uh, you know the this is this is resolved for the most part i mean it's still spooky looking but it's really not that spooky this is something that people have asked me about how i handle it and normally i just handle this uh kind of off video or off screen where we just like slowly ramp down construction as we approach this sort of point and look to just never uh default of course we did default for like two weeks but not the biggest deal in the world so you can tell visually here that our line of credit our bar is less full than before 
but if you look at the actual numbers, our credit is higher than before. So now the line of credit is far outstripping, um, you know, the actual accumulation of credit here, which is kind of what you're looking for. And notably, when you are running the the interest isn't a bad thing uh it's a form of rejection into the economy um obviously we would pre or we would prefer not to be paying it but it's not necessarily really a bad thing uh because it gets paid out to the owners of buildings um and they spend it on consumption and so this is this is fine for us um that they are making more money and then they will just spend more money and so this what this ends up doing is it raises the price of particularly luxury goods uh and makes these industries less or sorry more profitable so it's like a reverse tax on rich people if you want to think about it like this but what it does is it allows you to spend more money into the economy and it allows you to uh you know reach a higher level construction than you would otherwise which of course is what we're trying to do um and so this is a maximizing effect but you notice that we're never going to run out of money at this rate we're never ever going to run out of money at this rate because the line is increasing faster uh than than our actual credit amount much like how we did before uh, with mechanized workshops when we approached it we built stuff up to level 31 we are building stuff up to level 51 in anticipation of finishing shift work here uh, which is going to give uh, extra economies of scale notably economies of scale has increasing marginal returns you know the first additional building you get build where you build from what level one to level two uh, you will go from zero percent throughput to one percent throughput it's effectively 102 percent of a building you get the one percent throughput on the building you just built and the one percent on the previous building so that's 102 percent of a building when you build the 51st building it's effectively 200 percent of a building you get the 50 percent throughput on the new building you just built and we just get shift work for this uh and you also get uh you know an additional one percent on the previous 50 buildings and giving you effectively uh 200 percent of a building but uh every building after the 51st is only 150 percent of a building so one of the play patterns that becomes or starts to emerge when you start getting into shift work and you also start you know uh, getting a decently high enough mappy that the throughput can be more important than local prices um, is you will find and track down places you'll be like hey um, let's find some places that are you know level 31 and what you will do is you will increase them to level 51 uh, and this will be extremely good because instead of being you know effectively uh one building building one building at a time you're effectively building like two buildings at a time um in particular in the range well not quite two buildings at a time but in the range uh, of the low 30s to like 51 it's extremely useful to be pushing this throughput because it has increasing marginal returns and so that's what we will be doing here uh and we have a whole bunch in especially with like tools and other stuff like this we have a queue of 350 but at the very end we will 51 all these universities we pass half a billion GDP. Uh, very nice breakpoint. If you notice this little stint in the graph where we stopped going up and uh, instead had a little bit of a downward trajectory, that is when we deleted construction because the construction was driving up prices, which was driving up GDP. When we deleted it, uh, we had a little bit of a drop off in our, uh, you know, in our overall uh, GDP, and that's what that was about. So we launched a play to open Japan's market, and they just backed down without a fight, which is pretty nice. Now we will begin the process of trading with them, uh, looking to export everything that is expensive for them and import everything that's ridiculously cheap for them, try and get run up the volume, and then maybe uh, try and uh, siphon off some of their pops. Unfortunately, we can't actually pull off their pops while we're on state religion, and so we need to make a little bit of a choice. I think we're probably actually just going to stay on state religion, but still having them in our customs union will be pretty nice. We failed, uh, you know, wealth voting twice in a row now, really kind of running through molasses on these law passes. Uh, we are going to do proportional taxation. It didn't make more money for us before, which is why we didn't pass it before, because again, we are trying to max out construction as much as possible. However, uh, for a lot of countries even if it doesn't make you more money proportional taxation will be better uh, because it tax the upper upper rung strata more and this is preferable because overall it has a positive effect on your sol you see how uh, we are paying poll taxes like quite a bit of poll taxes this is the result of our tax system and we would have a much more progressive tax rate if we got onto proportional taxation now i mean it just makes us more money so we want to do this uh because this will give us a shot at getting to 2k construction before the end of this episode although that's maybe unlikely to be happening
Yes, yes, yes. Everything's going all according to plan. We will be assisting the CSA in exchange for become subject. Uh, this worked perfectly. We didn't want to declare on the war on the USA. We realized because we wouldn't be able to join against them if we had a truce with them. And so this is why we didn't declare war on the USA in the interim. Or, like, since we've talked about this. Uh, but now we can ask the CSA to become our subject. They will say yes, become our protectorate. And we will get to... Uh, you know, well, we will just crush on this war. There's not, it's not even remotely close. Uh, we don't even need to, like, mobilize half our army here. Um, not that, yeah, the, this is, this is going to be more than, more than easy enough, uh, for us to get in on them. And notably, uh, these guys are also a major power. Uh, and so if we do something like release up here, uh, which we of course won't be doing in this war because the CSA is the war leader. Uh, but re if we release New England, we probably could even get to the point where we can maybe, uh, just protect her at the USA outright as well, especially because we can do some funny stuff like take Ohio, uh, which would cut the entire leftern portion off from the market capital which is in the district of columbia here all right so prussia is just not doing anything useful so i think we might as well invite them to the customs union um they haven't made the north german fed i don't think they're going to and getting them into the customs union is going to be nice for us um we also are about to finish this very very key vulcanization tech huge come up for this tech uh the pm for this uh for the machine steel tools is absolutely insane uh the pm is just disgustingly uh disgustingly efficient it's like the most P it's the second most uh efficient pm in the game for like an industrial building after uh arms industries which you can't stack a lot of arms industries so it's basically the best industrial building in the game and so we're just going to look and we see northern manchuria southern manchuria and yunnan what we are going to do these have the highest earnings in terms of tooling workshops we can put down we are going to turn on the pms in those buildings in addition to uh beijing uh and so this will uh kind of seed our initial things we don't have that much rubber which is why we're not turning on a 51 building but we'll turn on these buildings and uh allow the rubber to become profitable and start employing up in this sort of thing um it requires rubber here let's actually just come in and southern manchuria it requires rubber, uh, which is, uh, you know, shout out to rubber now. Uh, it says it's not profitable, it's gonna do this, and then, uh, you know, uh it's just, uh, it's an extremely efficient PM. It's 50% more, and instead of wood, you're putting in rubber, and you 10 more steel, and 50% more uh, from steel tools uh, is kind of uh, the thing. Of course, we have a shortage, because uh, the rubber buildings need to employ up. Okay, so I was unaware that this is how this worked. The Confederation of the Rhine apparently lets you annex the subjects of your subjects in this way so we have uh you know a new dawn for germany uh we have the confederation of the rhine who's going to annex hohoserin which is a subject of prussia now because prussia is technically our subject this is why it's allowing this um and it's going to uh annex it with a previous guy we've had who's hamburg who's been a subject for some time just kind of uh, insignificant giving us a native interest so now we have the confederation of the rhine as our subject which is going to be uh coming in and taking a look it's going to be hamburg plus uh you know rhinish wutenberg uh plus up here confederation of the rhine confederate rhinish alba this type of thing now we can expand the confederation and will this integrate uh prussia uh i don't so i mean there's plenty of uh, i think there's is there anyone else to integrate other than prussia here who are we expanding with are we expanding with wallonia is wallonia in our customs union they are in our customs union, so we'll see if this annexes Wallonia or what exactly expanding the confederation does. Um, what does this do? We click the button. Did it annex them? No, it didn't. It didn't seem to annex anyone, which is a little bit strange. Then what's the point of having being able to click the button? Okay, well, we can use it again in three years. Um, we can do use this to vassal feed, though. And so uh, the idea is um, these guys... Oh, wait, what the hell? It's a protectorate of Prussia now. Oh, so they just annexed one of our oils? Oh, very, very weird. We might reload back to before our guy got annexed. That's so strange. Uh... 
So it annexed our subject underneath them and then made the Confederation of the Rhine, but it's a, a Prussian subject. But why are we why are we getting the events for the Prussian subject? I'm I'm befuddled. Hmm, interesting. I guess we'll we'll reload and just be very confused. I yeah, I don't know what to make of this. Yeah, things are looking pretty rough for the USA, you know. Um, and on the back, like, also, just to be clear, these guys are our protectorate as well here. We're not just, like, fighting the USA for nothing. We, in fact, got a big nice from this. Um, and there's a ton of really strong states in here. I forget which states have oil that can use standard oil. I don't think any of these do. I know there's a Midwestern state that does it. Um, and I'm not sure, maybe we get one of those, but, uh, if we got standard oil, that'd be pretty nice, but we, ha we have a pretty good, like, railway company in our Kaiping mining company, notice the productivity has been coming up, but we still haven't managed to get the prosperity bonus, uh, sometime down the line, we maybe want to try and, uh, research, like, uh, electric rails, this type of thing, uh, but currently, we are not natural spreading any production tech, so what we want to do is we want to avoid, um, researching production tech that way we can try and make sure we not spread things um, and also when we are researching production tech be very aggressive about researching ahead of time and leaving techs behind in the dust so doing something like just clicking you know compression ignition is a reasonable thing we are kind of doing a similar thing where we're just looking to hit uh you know one tier three another two th tier three and then go straight into a tier four so it's going to be a while before um we have an active tech research uh because we're doing malaria prevention so far ahead of time but we are natural spreading so 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 quick uh we will maintain up to speed on all the technology uh for the most part uh especially production tech which means we probably actually don't need to finish a whole bunch of those um you know universities we have in the queue we might finish them anyways um but we do have you know this 80 more coming perhaps it's a little bit overkill i'm not sure so we had thought about doing something a little bit exploitative before that we had done um and I think we, like, with the way this run's turning out, we might want to do a little bit min-maxi uh, type of things. And so something you can do is if you sway onto one side and you have no other diplomatic plays, you have to have zero other diplo plays, what ends up happening is uh, they see the, like, relative level of strength of mobilization, this type of thing, and then they go, oh, yikes, I would really like some help. So now the UK is like, man, I need a lot of help. This war is crazy. Um, you know, the Ionian Islands side is just so, so strong, plus 28. And then what you can do is you can come in, you can offer support, and... Uh, transfer anything because they're like super desperate now uh and then we'll swap them back to their side and so we could get anything including the very valuable british raj if we would uh you know be so inclined um we'll have a little bit of a think if we want to oh actually anything but the raj well if it's anything but the raj maybe we'll do it I was going to say we're not going to do it because uh, it's a little bit too exploitative, but if it's anything but the Raj, let's look to hunker down and get some resources uh, and uh, take Australia. So that'll be nice for us. Thank you. And then we will just say, hey, we'll support you. And then they're like, oh, thank God. Now they're uncertain, and now they're like, oh, I'm glad I have such a nice friend uh, in China. We get prop tax, which of course is going to take a second to adjust, as it always does. Um, but when it does, I think we will actually be able to, we got decent enough ticks, I think we might actually even be able to go up to 2k construction this episode, which is very exciting, because uh, we flew too close to the sun, and then we crashed and burned, and now we get to fly into the sun like we've always wanted. Uh, in terms of other laws we could pass, um, um, you know, we're still having a little bit of trouble because this guy is living forever, and we don't like that. Uh, we don't like it when this protectionist ideology guy uh, just refuses to die. Um, it's big sad because what we really want to pass is we really want to get on the laissez-faire, and boy oh boy, we can't. Um, we could, yeah, we, there's not a way for us to try and pass it, uh, unless we exile this boyo, but if we exile this boyo, we have to suffer, uh, 80 clout, uh, which is maybe not too bad, so maybe, maybe this is the, the soup we're about to swim in, so we're gonna exile this go guy, and then if, uh, here, let's do this, uh, if this guy, in fact, rolls, if this guy rolls another protectionist, I'm gonna tear my hair out, I'm gonna have no hair, okay, we get a pass fist, almost as bad, but fair enough. 
uh, and we will not be able to have 75 cloud. Big sad, but uh, we really do want to get on to laissez-faire. Um, it's going to be considerably better. Um, no one really hates it, and uh, we have passed the point where, you know, we're getting a huge amount of investment pool from, uh, if we look at reinvestment, we're still getting, sub rice patties are still the best thing, but that's only represents a quarter, and that's with the 50% juice that we're getting from agrarianism, so we're going to benefit a lot more uh, from this, in addition to adding an additional company. Hopefully we can get on it at a reasonable pace um, and, you know, uh, turn and burn in regards to the construction here because we have money to work with. Also important to note here, before the lower strata were paying kind of the highest tax amount, and now if you look at it, now they're paying very little in taxes. I think they were paying close to 20%, and this is going to result in a standard of living creeping up. You see they are running 11% excess relative to what we had before, and now these guys will be running a deficit, these guys will be running a deficit, and so we are effectively, you know, raking back a lot of this. A big part of this is the dividends taxes, but also the income taxes, um, rather than like the poll taxes and this sort of thing and so overall it will positively affect our sol because um the upper strata and the middle strata are going to be consuming goods that have exponential needs uh which means they are going to require more of them as their sol goes up uh, which means uh, uh on a per money basis they are less efficient at pulling up the average sol as the lower strata and so because now the lower strata is getting more money this should push up push up our SOL in addition to allowing us to construct more and then as we construct more this will drive up all the prices of all the goods we've been producing a ton of which should uh, you know raise GDP pretty considerably as we you know look to crank up. I'm not sure I've seen this event before a well-known pacifist has, oh, well, this is probably why, because we normally get rid of all of our pacifists, campaign for the Emperor Reform Association, etc., etc., mostly etc., uh, but we get uh, extra momentum and uh, decreased infamy, which is pretty nice considering we just reduced autonomy of the CSA, uh, because they're a subject of ours now. Um, also, we have a pretty big war kind of ramping on, why are you not assigned to the front, guy? Oh, you're about to get there? Fair enough. Um, we have a pretty big war ramping up here, against both Austria and Russia, uh, which is a little bit spooky. Uh, Russia sided in on them. We are assigning people to fronts. Uh, the fronts are going to come through, uh, but we're probably going to, you know, fight this episode uh, on the entirety, or sorry, we're going to fight this war on the entirety of next episode because, 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 if you notice we are hitting 2k construction and so with that we will conclude this i said with that there we go 2k construction so with that we will conclude this episode uh, we notably swayed in here to have them become protectorate this is the main reason why we swayed in um and uh we are going to be fighting this massive semi-world war next episode uh but this episode uh kind of two major things we played around with like uh getting really close to go getting bankrupt this sort of thing we actually bankrupted for two or we didn't declare bankruptcy but we were in default for two weeks and then we also backed the csa against the usa in order to get the csa as a subject and we're gonna look to vassal feed these guys back unfortunately uh usa is very likely to ask for as primary war goals ask for one of these guys to be transferred however he can't ask for both to be transferred so the other one we should be able to pull in both of them are on dominion we're going to leave them on dominion and we're going to try and uh feed uh the, the usa states to both these guys because the ai for both of these countries is going to be interested in taking usa states so that's what we got coming on up um i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please feel free to like comment subscribe are trying to hit uh 10k subs by the end of the year which would be pretty cool uh, a little surreal uh and you know other than all that have a good day.